you. Okay, welcome to Game of Codes, QR Thrones, Image Battles, and the Quest for Initial Access. I'm Josh Kamju. Quick background on myself. So you can find me on the internet as J. Kamju. I'm the founder and CEO of Sublime Security. We're a free and open detection as code platform for email attack defense and threat hunting. The reason that's relevant for today is that we see and detect lots of QR code phishing, which has become very big recently, and obviously a lot of other types of phishing as well. Prior to Sublime, I spent most of my career doing offensive cyber-related things for uh, government-related places, some time in the private sector doing um, pen testing and red teaming, a lot of gaining initial access via phishing, so I was on the offensive side, and now I'm on the defensive side. And prior to that, if you're familiar with the states, I uh, went to University of Maryland, studied computer science. I did a lot of martial arts, and I played a lot of Halo 3. So if you're a Halo 3 fan, uh, hit me up, slide into my DMs. We can, uh, we can do a little something. All right, quick agenda for today. We're going to start off with what is QR code phishing? Um, we'll talk about um, what we've been seeing in the wild. We'll talk about what makes QR code phishing so effective and why it's a great tool for attackers today and why they've, they've chosen to use this as a lure. We'll talk about different signals that you can use for detection and prevention. And then we'll briefly talk about some defense and depth strategies and We've got um, some bonus content as well for some even more recent trends that we've started to see. By show of hands, who has seen a QR code phishing attack or received one or someone in your organization has received one? Okay, so like the majority of folks. Okay, so it's relatively self-explanatory, I think. There's a QR code that's embedded in the email message and that QR code, when scanned, leads to some kind of harmful link. And that harmful link can be a credential phishing page, which it typically is, uh, or it could lead to a malware download. And the unhinged sometimes refer to this as quishing, but this will be the one and only time that you hear that word come out of my mouth during this talk. <laughs> any, any bold folks uh, scan this QR code? <laughs> QR code phishing has become very prolific. We'll get into a bunch of specific variants that we've been seeing in the wild. We're seeing lots of different impersonations of different brands, lots of different um, kind of attacker uh, social engineering techniques. Microsoft impersonations, DocuSign impersonations have been very big. Teams, Adobe, and we'll get into specifics of these and show you what, what attackers have actually been sending. So why QR code phishing? What makes it such an attractive phishing lure? Well, first and foremost, it's everywhere in our daily lives. We see it in restaurants. We see it in our conference booklets. We see it on... What's that? That's right. In the trains, yep. Uh, parking, parking lots. We see it everywhere in real life. We see it in marketing, emails, and invitations. We see it in the big Fabowski. It's my kind of favorite one here. <laughs> Number two, it's used legitimately on the internet, both in SaaS applications and in email communications from SaaS vendors. These are all legit uses of QR codes here. We've got, you know, greetings from vendors, uh, you know, known partners coming in through email. We've got registrations. We've got MFA configurations, uh, MFA setups, all kinds of things. And so, we're being trained, conditioned as, as users as to think that this is normal, right? And, and we also have some kind of association between certain tendencies like configuring MFA and QR codes. Those kind of go hand in hand together. And so we'll see that manifest in the actual attacks that we're seeing 
attackers are taking advantage of that kind of association that we have. Number three, you can't see what's behind a QR code without scanning it. We've trained our users and we've been trained to hover over links in emails, right? To see where does this lead? Is this bad? Does it match the, you know, what I'm seeing as the, as the display URL? You can't do that with a QR code. So looking at this QR code, who think, like anyone think that this is legit or malicious? Yeah, like nobody knows. No hands, right? It's a mystery. That's right. That's right. It's completely um, obfuscated. So that's very attractive. It's very attractive for attackers. Number four. There's no traditional URL or attachment or payload in these, um, in the message. And so not only does that make it more difficult for the users, but that also makes it more difficult for security tools. So down below here, we've got an example of an HTML, like the HTML section of an email message. This is all that's in the, in the message, right? There's no URL. There's no you know, actual payload here. And so what it actually is, it's an attachment. It's an embedded CID attachment, which is an image. And in the image is, what the QR, is where the QR code is embedded. So the email security tools actually have to have a specialized decoder to understand these and decode them and be able to recognize that they exist. So this has made the job of email gateways very difficult recently. So that's why it's been so effective landing in user inboxes, and we're having a, um, fo some folks are having a hard time with that. And here's an example of that image. This same image is actually an image, we call this an image as content attack. So the entire content of this attack is actually embedded in an image. So there's no text in the, in the HTML section of the message or the text the plain text section of the message. So all of these signals that traditionally would be embedded in the, in the body of a message and what email security tools are traditionally used to using to scan and analyze for malicious intent are actually just in a single image. So that makes it more difficult to actually detect. So these images content attacks have been really big recently. Um, just an image attachment embedded in the message. Sometimes it's a PDF attachment. Um, there's lots of different methods that we're seeing actually embedded here, and these are all evasion techniques that we're seeing. All right, so let's talk about some of the variants that we're seeing in the wild. And there's a couple motivations for this, so just in, in, in terms of why we're we're interested in, in seeing these. One is, is around education, user education. So if we, if we understand what attackers are using, we can better recognize those attacks ourselves and we can better educate our users to do so as well. And then it, it may help us also anticipate the next evolution of these types of attacks. So let's dig in. And, and, and the, the other reason is, by looking at the different variants, we can identify signals for detection. What are the signals that are common? What are the signals that are common across all of these types of attacks? And then we can build really effective detections from those. So that's kind of the mindset that we're going into this with. So we've redacted PII from these attacks, and we've replaced any personally identifiable information with the fictitious company information. And, and the reason we've done this is because the information here is actually used in the attacks to make them look more legitimate. So it's imp important to actually preserve this so that we can build proper detections and identify useful signals. So if you see Rachel Tyrell, she's the recipient of these attacks. If you see 
rachel at tyrellcorp.com. That's her email address. Tyrellcorp.com is the organization's domain. And we'll dig into even more specific signals here, but this is kind of the baseline context to know going into it. Okay, first attack. This is one of, I think, four variants of Microsoft impersonation attacks. So I'll give you all a second to digest that really quickly. Yeah. This is obviously not from Microsoft. This is uh, impersonating Microsoft here. And we can take a look at some of the signals here and break this down. So we've got um, a subject. We've got a subject with um, re-authentication. So this goes back to leveraging that connection that people have around QR code MFA, QR code authentication. So this is part of that social engineering tactic. In the sender, we've got Tyrell Corp IT department, so impersonating both the organization that they're targeting and you know, some kind of uh, entity that they might need to respond to, like the IT department. We can see the QR code that we've decoded, masecurity-login.com. And now let's talk about some of the signals here for identification of this attack. And we're going to do this a few times with different variants. And then at the end of it, we're going to look at all the signals together and actually build some effective detection capabilities. So first and foremost, we see a Microsoft logo in the body of the message. We see a sense of urgency in the subject. Update required, exclamation marks, all caps. We've got a QR code that points to a suspicious URL. We've got the recipient's second level domain in the sender's display name. So let's talk about this real quick. Tyrell Corp, right here, th this is actually a very common technique used in ma automated mass campaigns. What you'll see is the attacker takes the second level domain, which is tyrellcorp.com. Tyrell Corp is the SLD. Um, it also happens to be the root domain. Um, and the TLD, for example, is .com. And so there's all these actual aspects of a domain that attackers use to make the, the, their attacks look more legitimate. So what they'll do is they'll capitalize the first letter in an automated mass campaign, right? So they've got their target list, thousands and thousands of recipient emails. They'll take the SLD, they'll capitalize the first letter, and they'll throw it in the display name. So that's what we're seeing happen here. We've got, obviously, a QR code, the existence of a QR code in the body. And we have a sense of urgency in the body as well. So if you actually look at this text, you know, you have to act, otherwise you lose access to your account. So these are signals that as a defender we can look at to stop these attacks. And what's at the other end of this QR code? It's a Microsoft credential phishing page. And this is like this is the actual one from from that QR code, and this generally tends to be the intent behind most of these attacks. It's credential phishing. Okay, on to the second variant. We'll see a lot of overlap here, but we'll also see a few new signals. So I'll give you all a few seconds to just kind of digest this attack. All right. So we've got, again, 
a Microsoft logo in the body. We've got urgency in the subject. We've got a QR code to a suspicious URL. This URL is actually a it's actually a high reputation URL. This is a, this is actually this is not the full URL, but this is the domain. This is actually constant contact. So we're seeing and and this has been true for a very long time with URLs embedded directly in messages and in attachments are mass mailers being abused for high reputation. So if you look at this rs6.net on its own, you'll see that it's got lengthy domain age, you'll see that it's owned by a reputable provider, it's been around for a long time, but if you know that this is actually constant contact, then you know that any, anyone can employ one of these and it's effectively an open redirect. So this will actually redirect to the malicious URL. So it's, it's actually quite important to follow these redirects for analysis. Couple of new signals that we see here. We've got the recipient local part in the subject. So there we see Rachel's name in the subject. And again, this is a technique used by actors, especially in mass campaigns when they're automating to take the recipient's local part of their email address. So Rachel's email is rachel at tyrellcorp.com. They'll take that Rachel part, whatever it is leading up to the at sign, and they'll throw that in the subject or the display name. So in this case, we're seeing it in the subject. And again, this is part of social engineering tactics to make this look more believable and targeted and meant for Rachel and, and for her to take action. And again, we're seeing the sender's this, uh, recipient has to be in this display name, and the other signals are pretty much the same. Typically, we're seeing these come from compromised accounts. So they'll, they'll be compromised for some period of time. A lot of times these are long lists of compromised credentials sold on the dark web, and then they'll just be recycled the next time. So typically, sometimes we see reuse of these, but um, you know, a lot of times, the majority of the time, we see them get recycled with, with new email addresses. So that really goes back to why behavioral detection is important for these. So we blocking like an IOC based block list is, is not really going to help much because we are seeing them rotate these IOCs so frequently. And by IOCs, I mean the sender email address, the URLs and the QR codes, those types of things. They're always getting recycled for new ones. Okay, another variant of Microsoft, this time with an evasion technique. We're seeing the attacker try and evade U uh, QR code detection and decoding by using different colors here. This doesn't actually matter. <laughs> and uh, you can decode this using any pretty much QR code decoder, but uh, we've seen it. It has, it has no effect on the colors in the QR code have no effect on the QR code um, and its, and its uh, performance or anything like that. Yeah, it has, it has no effect on it. The, the other new signal that we're seeing here, which is kind of odd actually for these types of automated attacks, we see this more often with BEC attacks and other types of credential phishing, is a hijacked thread. So in this case, if you actually scroll down in this email a little bit, you'll see that they actually hijacked a prior thread in this user's compromised account. And so we see that a lot of times for BEC attacks to basically have like an ongoing, make it seem like there's an ongoing conversation that they're picking up, and that helps them actually be more believable. So it was kind of odd that we saw it in this because Q 
QR codes, you know, this type of automated email, when would you see that in a hijack thread? But we, yeah, we saw it on this one. Okay, last Microsoft impersonation example here. So in this case, we saw a bit of human resources and pay payroll impersonation going on here. Again, enticing the user around something important happening going on. We see that carry over into the sender's display name here, HR payroll support. This time, we've got the full recipient root domain in the sender's display name. So slightly, slightly changed variant of this signal. It's no longer the SLD capitalized, but it's the full domain name. And then another interesting thing that we've been seeing recently has been abuse of open reader, a Bing, Bing.com open redirects. So for the red teamers out there, you can go and create a redirect for Bing, and you can send that in an email, and you can have it point to wherever you like. And so the reason that this is important or useful is that for any sort of email security solution, and also from the user's perspective when they hover over the link, they're seeing Bing.com. And so if that's coming in a Microsoft email, well, that actually looks more believable, right? It's Microsoft, Bing, those are the same company, so that seems legit. So we're seeing, we're seeing Bing actually being abused quite a bit for, for open redirects here. And not just in QR codes, we're seeing this in the email bodies, we're seeing it in attachments as well. Okay, well actually we got one last Microsoft example. This one is much more subtle, so there is no big Microsoft logo, but there is a task. There's like, if you see down here, there's like smaller Microsoft, there's a Microsoft to do, there's a Teams logo, a Microsoft planner. So otherwise, we're seeing a lot of the same stuff. We've got the full recipient's email address in the subject here this time. And this is actually an image as content attack as well. So everything that you're seeing here is all in an attached image. There's, there's basically nothing in the body. OK, Office 365. So we're seeing targeted Office 365 logos. Um, otherwise, this is pretty much pretty, pretty similar to what we've seen. We've got the user's email address being uh, inserted into the body here. Um, and this is pretty typical of like legit off, you know, types of notifications where it says like this email blank, right? It's, it's part of that tactic around making it look more believable. OK, we're not going to go in depth into all of these other attack variants. But we've, I've um, aggregated some categories here just to give you a sense of the diversity in these campaigns. So SharePoint impersonation on the top left, this is kind of your standard what it looks like when you receive a SharePoint file shared with you. And what they've done is right down below it is a QR code. Similar in the middle example here, except uh, just slightly different template. And then we've got the actual SharePoint logo and employee benefits being impersonated here. DocuSign, besides Microsoft, DocuSign is the second most popular brand that we're seeing impersonated. And it's, it's quite clever, actually. It looks, this looks like a legit you know, DocuSign template but they've got a QR code just right in the middle there. And they've got a QR code down at the bottom, and we've got a variant of that template here. And again, the reason these work, these are landing, these are bypassing Microsoft and Google today, is because there's no links in here, right? So a lot of the requirements for detection are like malicious link, malicious attachment.
like oh, how, yeah. how often are users falling for these yeah. and actually scanning? I don't have that available right now. Yeah, but we've heard we've heard lots of folks falling for them just anecdotally. But I don't have empirical evidence right now. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, we're seeing, you know, we're seeing a lot of users fall for these. Yeah. And and a lot of it is a lot of it is that a, most folks just don't know, like at most end users just don't know that this is really an attack vector. Um like I was I sent, you know, some of this to like to my sister, right? And she's she had like no idea, but she's like, you know, she gets phishing simulations all the time and she's like a corporate, you know, she works in uh corporate um, environments and just like just anecdotally and and for our for, from our customers you know um, prior to to um, just like having standalone protection for example we've seen yeah a lot of folks just don't know about it so even with the non Microsoft impersonations the DocuSign leads to cr Microsoft credential phishing too. So that we're seeing the majority of these are Microsoft credential phishing intents. Adobe is another big one that we're seeing. So here's some variants of Adobe impersonations. Um, we've got the classic Adobe logo. We've got the simplified Adobe logo. This middle one here is, was interesting because there, there wasn't even a QR code directly embedded in the message. It was an attachment that wasn't embedded. So the user would have to like actually view the attachment and then scan it, which was interesting. And um, Adobe Acrobat Sign is also is like Adobe's competitor to, to DocuSign. Yeah, the question was, are any of these um, image, image as content attacks? Yeah. Um, this, these two were not. I believe, I believe these two were on the left. I think these two were um, just normal, embedded in the message. Yeah. Okay, and we're also seeing just generic QR code phishing attacks. So, you know, we're seeing them in foreign languages. We're seeing them, there's no brand logo being impersonated here, but there's just like a generic, you know, 2FA, uh, you need to renew, like who knows what service this is even for. It's just generic. And then the boldest one is literally we saw a blank email with just a QR code. <laughs> and, um, and this was just like, this was pretty fantastic. There, there was a, um, interestingly, there was also a disclosure statement input by the attacker at the bottom. So we see this quite often where attackers are just inserting like confidentiality notices at the bottom of attacks to make them seem more believable. Okay, let's talk detection and prevention. So we talked a lot about the different signals that we can use. So how do we actually put those together and, and make those useful from an email defense perspective? So there's a, there's a lot of signals available to us for brand impersonation detection. On the left side there, we've got the different brand logos we can use. We've got different signals in the subject and display name and the body. And then we've got various ones for images content attacks. So here's an example of how we've put the, these primitives together. So you'll need to look at um, inbound messages, and then you'll need to run, you want to identify logo detection, you want to identify logos in the body of the message, and then you want to identify QR codes either in the QR, or either in the embedded directly in the body of a message or embedded in an attachment. And we can put these supporting signals 
together as well to help mitigate false positives. So we can start to incorporate sender context. So how reputable is this sender? Have we ever seen them before in our organization? Have we ever sent messages outbound? Have we received messages from them? Tell me, you know, run uh, who is in Richmond and tell me what, how old is the domain? Um, how old is the URL in the QR code? Who owns the domain? We can do analysis specifically on the QR code URL itself. Does it have a suspicious TLD? If you noticed from the QR code URLs that were embedded in the prior examples, there were a lot of suspicious TLDs that typically wouldn't be delivered, that, that would typically be, be blocked, especially for like American companies, or at least it would be very high signal. So we, you know, like a, a really sus.ru domain, that would typically lead to like, you know, a quarantine or something in, for like an American or European company that doesn't do business in Russia. But because it's obfuscated, it's getting, they're, they're sliding right through and there's less scrutiny being put on them. And then we can analyze the actual content of the QR code destination. So if you go out to the QR code and follow the redirects, where does it end up on? Does it end up on a free subdomain host? Does it end up on a Cloudflare worker? Does it end up on some .ru? Um, we can look at the different hops that we take in that, in that redirect chain. How many redirects are there? Are there th three, four, five? That's usually, that can be indicative of um, an attack, especially if you're cycling different TLDs um, and going through a series of different domains. If you're going from like a free subdomain host to a free file host to something else, that can be suspicious. We can analyze the final DOM of the destination, and this comes down to actually detecting the credential phishing content itself on the page. We can run OCR, optical character recognition, on that page. We can run some machine learning and natural language understanding and computer vision on the credential phishing page itself to say, hey, is there a Microsoft logo on this page? Is there a login box? Is there a username field, a password field? And then lastly, we can check to see Last but not least, if there's any files getting auto-downloaded, is this an HTML smuggling attack? Is this a you know, payload delivery mechanism? So we've open sourced our detection rules for this. That's our repo. And we've categorized this here in a few different, um, in a few different ways. So if you're interested in how to actually put these together, um, you can go and you can look at these. It's all open source. There's our repo up there. So we've got generic QR code phishing detection and prevention. So this will cover all the brand stuff and all of the generic ones. And um, we've got it specific images content detections. There's brand specific ones. And then there's a bunch of evasions that we've been seeing recently as well. So we've been seeing QR codes in HTML attachments, basically getting HTML smuggled into environments. So that's been interesting. And then the, the most recent one has been EML attachments. So there's basically, you get a message, and that message has an EML attachment. And Outlook will actually, we've got some content on this if we, if we get to it, but Outlook will actually render an attached EML in the, or in the top level message. So it's basically a brilliant evasion technique, but it embeds the QR code in the malicious URL down deep in the, in the message. Okay, let's talk link analysis evasion. So we, we've, we've talked a lot about the top level analysis and the evasion techniques, but what's happening when we actually go out and, see, and, and try and inspect these QR codes? So the most common thing we're seeing is mobile user agent validation. So because the attacker has an expectation here that users are scanning this with their mobile phones, they've got some protections in place to, to validate that anyone visiting their site is actually coming from a mobile UA. So 
We can see here, for example, this is the Bing redirect. And this goes to redirects through to a dot .top domain, which is super sus in and of itself. But then, after the user agent check, we actually get out, we, we are, we're visiting this not as a mobile UA, and we actually get redirected to the legit office365.com domain. And we, actually, we get dropped on an error page, actually. So that's quite interesting. So this is a defensive mechanism so that you know, security researchers or automated email security tools are not able to inspect the contents. They just see a legit domain. We're seeing delayed redirects. So we have these multi-level chains here where the initial URL is, let's say, for example, Bing or whatever. When you connect to the server, we'll get a header back, this refresh header. And the refresh header tells the browser, for example, refresh after x seconds and then go to this URL. And so in this example, we're seeing zero, which is going to do it immediately. But we've seen other timeouts here as well. So this can be an effective evasion mechanism for any automated tools that aren't waiting around long enough. So you can do a delayed redirect in the headers. You can also do it just as HTML. So you can do this on the page, on the contents of the credential phishing page itself. Or this can be in an, in an HTML smuggled attachment, um, or in an HTML attachment, too. So we've seen, we've seen both. And there's, we could probably do a whole talk on just JavaScript obfuscation and, and the different evasion techniques we're seeing. But just to highlight one of these is delayed redirects um, in obfuscated JavaScript. So this was, this was actually an HTML attachment that was sent. And there is a set timeout here, if you see that JavaScript function. And there's a bunch of obfuscation happening here, but ultimately, if you see this location here and this href, this is going to, after a certain timeout, which can be configured by the attacker, redirect, set the location.href of the page, which is like set the, you know, where the page is to this destination. Okay. This is really just scratches the surface on de defense in depth, but beyond detection and prevention, there's a couple things that we can do that are that, that we should are kind of table stakes, right? So user education is key. That's kind of the point of a lot of this content here is we need to tell our users, tell folks about the threat. This threat exists. This is a, this is very much happening in the wild, and. First and foremost, folks just need to know that it, it exists and this could be malicious. And due to the nature and the intent of these attacks, since they're mostly credential phishing, if you've in, implemented multi-factor authentication and in particular hardware keys, um, WebAuthn or you know like a YubiKey or name name your hardware um, token, then you will be resilient to these credential phishing attacks. So we are seeing for non-hardware-based MFA, like TOTP, you know, the one-time passwords, and you're, you know, you've got a code in your phone, we're seeing those get relayed through proxies. Um, attackers have, there's open source tools that are very common, like Evil, Evil Jinx, for example, that will take those codes and relay them to the uh, legitimate site and and then hijack the session. So hardware hardware tokens if you can. Okay, I think we're out of time, so we'll have to save these for next time. But thank you very much for your time. And I, I think we do we have five minutes for questions or. We have, uh, I think, time for uh, 
one or two questions. Uh, so if anyone does have any questions, raise your hand and you'll get the mic. Close. Any suggestions about um, altering Outlook for um, blocking images or anything like that, or exchange stuff so that uh, the images get flagged and you get warnings? So the short answer is, is not really. Um, we haven't found Exchange to really be expressive enough to do this effectively without false positives. Um, so we haven't, we haven't seen any like, effective transport rules that, that you can really do at the Exchange level without a lot of false positives. That generally tends to be the, the, big, the big risk with that. Yeah. I'm wondering what, I mean, most people, I, I would imagine if you were presented with this on your computer, you're going to scan it with your phone, your personal phone, right? Yeah. That's how most people are going to yeah. do that. And I'm wondering, I, I mean, I really hadn't thought of that before, but it's, is, there, is there natively something in Android or Apple that, that allows security configurations around scanning QR codes? I mean, I, I'm, I don't scan QR codes a lot, but when I have, it seems like you hover it over it and it pops up and says, you want me to take you to this place you're scanning? But it doesn't sell you, tell you what it is, or like you said. Yeah. But is there any, I mean, I, I just wonder if this is something maybe we ought to be, as a community, saying something to Apple or, or Google about. Like, I, I would love to put this on Apple and Google to do a better job of of um, I mean, like same thing with SMS, right? Is like we, we're seeing so many attacks delivered through here, um, through SMS, through QR codes, and there's it doesn't seem like there's much filtering going on. So I would love to see that come from Apple or Google. As far as the as an organization, it's really tough because these are personal devices, and so that is part of why this is such an attractive lure is that this is pivoting off the network, off the corporate device. So you have no network introspection. You don't know if they clicked on it because it's not going through your web gateway. There's no logs. So it's definitely one of the challenges around this is that pivot to the personal device. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you.